Coming up on the program, we've harvested our potatoes. Now we're gonna revitalize the soil and plant some turnips for a fall harvest. And it's time the time of year where we're utilizing every spare spot to just get a little bit more planted. All that and more coming up today on the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener is sponsored in part by For all your non-GMO, heirloom, organic, vegetable, flowers, and herb seeds, visit DollarSeed.com. Sue Growing Supply, located in Wausau, Wisconsin, focusing on certified leaf compost, an excellent amendment for poor soil. With their new garden blend, improving soil structure in clay and sandy soil, great for creating new garden beds. Also available from Sue's, pre-filled trays and pots with professional potting soil mix or organic rice hull based potting soil mix. Bag and bulk of certified leaf compost also available. Visit SueGrowingSupply.com. Don't poison your soil with municipal water. Attach a body, mind, and soil hose and filter. Free shipping exclusively through the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com. Just click on the body, mind, and soil icon. Authentic Haven brand, soil conditioner for the home gardener. Easy to brew, 100% organic. Visit ManureTea.com. Rain Reserve. Reserving your rain, preserving our future. Rain Reserve, manufacturing of rainwater capturing capabilities. Visit rainreserve.com and use coupon code RAIN2016 to save 10% on your purchase. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. I'm Joy Baird. We are in the former potato patch here. We've worked the soil over. We've got as many potatoes out as we think we have in the ground and sometimes you're going to miss some and they're going to come up naturally but what we're doing here we've prepped this bed and we're going to go ahead and plant turnips now turnips sometimes we plant rutabagas as well but there's a difference between the two they're both root crops but turnips take between 40 and 60 days to reach maturity based on your variety and rutabagas take 85 to 95 days to reach maturity well the time frame that's left in the growing season here in southeast Wisconsin, we're going to push that 60 day limit. And what I mean by that is not, I don't mean ice and snow is coming, but the cold temperatures will come to the point where they're not going to grow anymore and they're going to get stagnant in their size. So we want to get them in the ground and get as many in this bed. This bed is approximately 20 foot by three, three and a half foot long or wide so we're going to plant as many turnips in this bed as possible now there's a couple of varieties of turnips that we're growing we're going to focus mainly on purple top turnip or white globe variety which is these are packaged these are new seeds here so we're going to utilize most of the new seeds if not all of them we are going to burn through some old seed and what i mean by old seeds these are from 2010 2011 so many many years ago so there's some white turnips here, there's some uh, purple white globe turnips here, and some uh, more white purple turnips globe. So we'll get into all of how we're going to plant with the old seed versus the new seed so we can get as much out of the ground and, and utilize, and maybe some of these old seeds are, are vi viable, vi viable. So what we're going to do here, first I want to work the bed. We've went through with the gar garden fork and flipped it and removed it, many, many of the weeds. So, but first, before we plant, I want to vitalize, revitalize the soil with some natural soil builder uh, concentrate compost from Sustain Natural Fertilizer. It's uh, derived, it's not, it's a fertilizer that is not mined. It is derived from natural materials, pine bark, as well as turkey litter. This particular uh, category is 263, 2% 2 nitrogen, 6% uh, phosphorus and 3% potassium. Now if you're growing root crops like we are you want that higher central number, center number, middle number because that's going to encourage root development and flower production. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, follow the uh, instructions on the back for proper applicational rate for this uh, type of application and we'll work it in the soil a little bit and then we will go ahead and get our turnips planted. Okay, so with this particular uh, variety of sustained uh, fertilizer, we need 
12 cups of fertilizer, two cups per 10 square foot, or we've got about three by 20, that's approximately 60 square feet, and it always helps to have a handy canning jar around, especially a half gallon where you're not really, you're not supposed to can with, you're only supposed to put uh, apple juice and grape juice in one of these and can them up based on the National Food uh, and Home Preserve uh, website. So what I need here is, I'm just gonna, take and broadcast this until I get two-thirds down, fill this up halfway again, and broadcast the rest of it, and then I'll take my rake and just work it in the top couple inches of soil, then we'll get planting our turnips. Okay, so I've got it worked in first couple inches, and as we plant, it'll get worked in a little bit more, and I've got my irrigation system, above ground irrigation system, reversed. We was watering the straw bales, and since we've got the potatoes pulled over there, I've reversed that one to spray on the straw bales, this one to spray on this bed with the turnips that we'll be planting. And you're always gonna have some weeds here that we can extract as we get going. So the nice thing about the sustained fertilizer, it is OMRI listed, and it's not, you know, you don't, there's not big holes in the earth mining minerals, so that's something nice to, if you wanna look at the end of that, that's, uh, and it can also be used as a, um, a side dressing as well. So now let's talk about planting our turnips. You can use your pointy hole. You can also use the end of a rake, and I'll demonstrate that. So let's say we're gonna make a row here. You could just embed that there. You have a little uh, drill, and you could plant your seeds like that. So that would work also. Now with these turnips, we're gonna put them about a foot apart, maybe a little less. Um, they'll germinate in about five to 10 days, quarter inch depth, three inch spacing, and about one foot apart in rows. So once I get that, I'm gonna see how many rows I have, and then we'll determine how we're gonna mix those old seeds in with the new seeds to guarantee us to have a solid bed of turnips that we can harvest in about 60-ish days from now. Okay, so I've got my spacing about a foot uh, apart on these rows here, about 15 rows is what we're gonna have. Now where the above ground sprinkler system is here, that is gonna be all 100% fresh new seed down there. So that's the kind of division here. Up on this side here, we're gonna mix, we're gonna plant each row very heavy with the, uh, the turnip seeds. Now, typically you're gonna go one seed per every square inch. I'm not even gonna measure, I'm just gonna Paste, I'm just gonna layer them in there, probably five or six seeds every three inches, just to try to see how good these seeds are. Now these should sprout with the system, with the irrigation system, we'll keep the water to them. These should sprout in about five to seven days. So in a week time, I should be able to come back here and go, okay, they, these never sprouted, these never sprouted, I'm gonna replant fresh seed in there, or these all sprouted, we're good shape, I can start thinning them out. So this is one way to get rid of old seed. Another way is I could take and put them in a mason jar with a little bit of water, let them soak for 20 minutes, and then let them uh, drain the water off and let them sprout or something of that nature, do a germination test. But we're just gonna do it this way because I'm, I'm certain that a lot of these seeds are not going to be viable but we're gonna do it uh, and, and try them in the ground this way. So we're just gonna take, and uh, you can be very monotonous about this, or you can just broadcast the seeds like I'm gonna do, even with fresh seed. You can see how tiny these seeds are when it comes to trying to finesse each one every three inches. So what I'm gonna do here, we're just gonna take, and realistically, you can see I'm just running them through my fingers just like this and moving my hand and that's the way you're going to plant that's the way i plant i plant these seeds i plant carrot seeds like this anything that's got very small size to it and then i can come back and thin them out uh, lettuce seeds is the same way but thin them out later yeah you're going to waste some seed just but also with these older seeds um, i'm not going to waste as many because not all of these are going to germinate like uh, fresh seeds will so I've got that row completed. I'm gonna go in on top one more time just to get a little more extra there. So that's what I'm gonna do. And then when I get down to the fresh seeds, I will do it just slightly different. Okay, so we've got those planted extremely heavy. Do not do that with fresh seed because you will have thousands of seed, thousands of turnips you have to thin out. But with a old seed, that's a good way to get rid of them. And that's what we're trying to do. We've got a lot of seeds from 11, 2010, 11 and 12 that are pretty much not good, but we're gonna utilize them in, best in the garden. Now with the fresh seeds here, 
we want to go about every three inches and I'm going to be very uh, not as heavy with the seeds as I were with the old ones. So same, same type of seeds. Let's straddle this here. So I'm just going to gauge here. I'm going to put them in my finger there. Uh, drop one or two there. Take another three inches. Drop uh, two or three. Try to do it best you can every couple inches. Uh, put two or three seeds there and you're going to hopefully get something that'll come up. Just like when you plant peppers or tomatoes, you plant a couple extra seeds in case some of them does not, uh, does not germinate. So that's what I'm doing here. And then we'll come back, cover them up, and put a little water to them. So now we got them planted, time to cover them up. You want them to be at about a quarter inch deep. Now if you do go, go a half inch, you're going to be fine. They're going to come up, but you don't want to mound dirt on top of them, you know, heal them up like a potato row. Now another thing, this is very rocky soil. You want to try to avoid rocks, but you know, we all don't have perfect raised bed conditions where we can grow beautiful immaculate turnips. So we're using what we've got here and you just want to use your hand or some type of tool and just graze the dirt over top of it just enough to cover the seed and then you want to water it even though the soil is moist if uh, you've planted right after a rain or after you've watered we're going to go ahead and turn on our irrigation system just to get some moisture in the ground settle the dirt and whatever seeds may not have gotten covered we will go ahead and get them covered so planting so it's time to harvest our potatoes in containers, which harvesting potatoes is a treasure hunt regardless. We've got three different uh, bags here of potatoes, and we've got a little something interesting going on with this particular bag. I do not remember the varieties of which we planted. What I've got here is we've got a couple things here. We've got potatoes that have died back, and that's the key. It's time to harvest uh, whenever the potatoes die back because all of the plant's energy has gone to producing the tubers, and then the plant dies back. You want to know at least the variety of potato that you're growing so you have a, a general sense of when the potato is ready to harvest because if the potato is a mid-variety potato that takes about 90 days and the, the potato gets, let's say, early blight, dies back in 30 or 40, it's not ready. It's not, you're not going to have any tubers, so keep that in mind. Now with this, we've got a, a potato here that is either sat dormant and began to sprout or is re-sprouting off of the, uh, the tuber that we planted. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to cut back the dead uh, stuff there. I'm not going to touch that there. I'm going to leave that alone because that's regrowing. That can produce more potatoes for us. What I am going to do is I'm going to gently remove the potatoes around that plant and just see if, well, we do have some there, see what we have in that instance. And I'm going to kind of not touch that particular area. These are a red potato, it appears. So I'm not going to be able to dump this one out like I had intended to because I'm going to leave that potato alone just to see what, uh, what we get there. Now these potatoes were, have been in the containers and really have been neglected water-wise. That's why we're getting a minimal amount of potatoes. And I was expecting that. So right there, uh, got a few now potatoes. We're gonna get, uh, this is a 20 gallon grow bag here. We had several potatoes planted in it. We'll see what we have. Okay, we still, we do have some small potatoes, but that's what a plant will do is if it's not getting enough water. It's gonna produce a lot of little, little potatoes rather than four or five big potatoes. So putting water to these always is the best plan, but we are getting, some sized potatoes there. Right, let's move these out of the way. Compost those. Oh, that's a nice, that's a nice potato there. Here's a couple more nice potatoes. Oh, another nice potato. Oh, I see one there. I don't know what size it was. Maybe I didn't see one there. Oh, 
that appears to be all in that bag there. Not a terrible little harvest. Now, obviously, if this was the only bag we had and we were watering on every, you know, making sure the soil stayed moist, we would have more of a harvest here. So let's see what we have. Let me get this cleaned up and let's see what we have in this other bag. Initially, I see a purple potato on the top, so that's good. Now these are, realistically, if we would leave these alone for another week, they would be to the point where they would be as dead as the previous bags were, but we're gonna go ahead and dig these up and see what we have. Now, here's what, uh, that's a potato there, purple potatoes here, another purple potato. The only disadvantage with the purple potatoes is they look very similar and blend in with the soil. Oh, there's another one. Make sure I don't have anything. That's a five gallon grow bag there. So you can grow them a five would about be about the smallest. Seven, 10 would be ideal, simply because you want a lot of root space uh, to grow these in. So not a two and a half bags here. Got some size here. I'm much, I'm much pleased to see a large potato of this size and only have one or two or three of them than four, you know, 10 or 12 little tiny potatoes like that. So key to, uh, key to potatoes in containers, keep the moisture to them, get a good variety that's very successful in your area, and have big potatoes when it's come time to harvest. So we're in another potato patch. We planted some turnips over on the other potato patch. This patch here got a couple of things going on. This here, at the time of irrigation setup, we uh, had a little bit left over for container purposes, what this was designed for, but I put on a pole, started broadcasting water there, and a little bit in, uh, right there. Those are dying back, these are not. Um, so we're just gonna leave these alone until they do die back, and that's the time you wanna harvest your potatoes. Uh, so we'll see how tremendous or not tremendous the harvest might be since we're keeping the water on them as well as the two rows behind me with some great white northern beans in the center there. So with all that being said we've got some spots here where we have harvested our potatoes. So we've got a little spot here probably three by three and we're going to utilize this spot for some late beets. Beets will take 60, 67 days to reach maturity. So that's what we're going to plant here. Now we're going to revitalize the soil again with some sustained armory listed, sustained natural fertilizer. I'm going to do the applicational rate here. And then I'm going to work it in with the, the rake, just a couple inches. And you can already see we had radishes intercropped in the potatoes. And some of those are beginning to sprout that have uh, seeded themselves. So I'm just going to work this in. Now, where this spot is located, we do have an irrigation system that will cascade water over top of it, and we'll get that going whenever we get these planted. So, we can plant a couple of different ways. I can just take my handle, again, lay it down, or I can make a little trenches here, and that's probably what I'll do. And we want to plant the beets about a half inch deep, and about every uh, four, three, four inches, because remember, they're going to bulb up. Well, that's the intention, uh, to bulb up to about baseball size is the intention. We did have some over in some of the grow bags along the house that did just that. So we want to put the water to them, and then they should grow just fine. So, get the ones, okay. So again, we can trench it, we can use our hand. Uh, loose rock free soil if possible, but we all don't have that. So I'm really going to put two seeds every four inches. And then once I get this planted, we'll turn the irrigation system on and we'll go down and plant some pole beans in another spot that is just like this. 
So here's another spot where we had some space. We're gonna do some Kentucky Wonder pole beans. We're gonna grow those. Those take about 70-ish days to reach maturity. It's gonna kind of push on our first frost, but we're gonna see if we can make it work. And again, a lot of these potatoes here will be coming out as they die back and wanna wait until the plants really get to a complete dieback stage to utilize, uh, get the most out of the potatoes. And you can see here, this is a radish that has gone to seed. It is bitter, it will not taste good, but if you have livestock and a compost pile, those, those two are options. But when we come to planting these beans, I'm gonna add some more uh, sustained fertilizer. Now beans fix their own nitrogen in the soil. That means that on the nodules, there's little nodules on the roots, and if you pull the roots up, those have small amounts of nitrogen that will fix into the soil. If you provide nitrogen for beans, they would utilize the nitrogen that is available in the soil without pulling it from the atmosphere and creating their own nitrogen. So it may help them a little bit in that, in that instance there. So with beans, we're just gonna do a trench around this pole trellis that I've constructed. Simply a piece of one and a half, two inch PVC pipe found. This is a Christmas wreath from a, a, uh, from a real Christmas. There was real pine needles on there. Cut that off, that was uh, easy. Uh, found pipe, and this is just twine here that we're gonna use for the beans to crawl up. Obviously, on the back side of the garden, there's a much taller one, but these can be made in any form or fashion, so that's how this one is constructed. You could also buy this for about 40 bucks online on some uh, garden catalogs as well. You can also do this with uh, bike sickle rings or rims. You can take a, a stick or a, a two by four or a two by three, put in the ground and nail the bicycle rims up the side of it and they can grow up uh, on a trellis just like that. It works really well or any other type of trellis. So we're just going to plant the beans half inch deep and then cover them up as well as on this side here and on the back side I've got about six inches of extra space. I'm going to throw in some Swiss chard there as well. So just because the season of summer is winding down, you want to still utilize the spots that you have available for little things like Swiss chard and beans and beets uh, to get a little bit more out of the garden to fill your pantry and your canning jars up. Thanks for joining me. Join me again next time for more organic gardening and food preserving. I'm Joy Baird and this has been the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener. For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.